Hello and welcome to this lecture and in this lecture we are going to learn about the PEP8 style guide for Python. So PEP8 is actually a style guide which stands for Python Enhancement Proposal number 8 and it's actually a style guide on how to format your Python code. So there are actually a few rules which we need to follow in this particular style guide. So we will go through each one of those rules one by one. So without wasting any time let's go ahead and learn about rule number one. So the rule number one states that use spaces instead of tabs for indentation. So whenever you indent your code, uh, so let's basically go ahead and write in some code where we need to perform indentation. So let's say you want to write a for loop. So you type for x in range. And then what you do is that you simply specify some number over here in brackets. And then when you hit enter, as you could see, you get an indentation over here. So if you go back and count the number of spaces over here, you will see one, two, three, and four. So as you could see on the next line for indenting your code, you use four spaces over here. And that's the thing which you need to remember that you always need to use spaces instead of tabs. So if you hit tab over here, as you could see, still you have four spaces. But the main issue with this is that your Python interpreter actually interprets the spaces and tabs in different fashion. So always make sure that instead of using tabs, you use one, two, three, and four spaces. And from this line onwards, you could actually go ahead and print out whatever things you actually need. So this is one of the rules which you need to follow while indenting your code. That is, you must always use spaces or you must always prefer spaces instead of tabs. Now, even if you use tabs, that code is syntactically correct, but that's not the efficient way to write Python code. Now, the next rule in this PP style guide is that use four spaces for each level of indentation. So as you could see here, we have performed a single level indentation. Now, let's say you have to perform multi-level indentation. So what you could do is that you could go ahead and perform indentation again. So you could type for Y in range and you could specify the range as five. And as you could see, now we have the next level of indentation here. And for each level of indentation, you actually use four spaces. So as you could see, this is level one, we have used four spaces. This is level two indentation right over here. And henceforth, we use four more spaces. So right now we have eight spaces over here. So this is another rule which you need to follow while indenting your Python code. So after indentation, let's move on to the next rule. That is every line of Python code should be 79 characters or less. Now let's say you have some line of code over here. So let me just go ahead and type in print. And let's say you have uh, some line of code like let's say uh, this is a simple line of code. So if you actually notice over here, if you go down over here, as you could see, it says uh, we actually have the line and column number over here. So as you could see, we have 39 characters in our line of code here, and that's actually fine. But in case if your line of code is pretty long, that is, let's say if it extends 79 characters, then that thing actually makes your code inefficient and it's not going to look clean. So whenever your line of code actually extends 79 characters, you should always make sure that you either split your single line of code into multiple lines or you actually make it a point to make it less than 79 characters. So moving on to the next rule and the fourth rule is the rule for functions and classes. And the rule for functions and classes actually states that you always need to have two blank lines after each function or after each class. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to define a function. So let's type def, let's say display. And let's say it says something like message. And let's say we print the message over here. So as you could see, we have one, one function over here. And if you could notice, this thing actually shows you an error. And if you hover over it, it actually says PP8 expected two blank lines found. So whenever you write a function, you always need to make it a point that above the function and below the function, you do need to leave two blank lines. So as you could see right now, we have only one blank line. And that's why we are getting a warning kind of thing over here because it does not follow the PP8 rule, which is leaving two blank lines before a function. So if you again hit enter, as you could see, now we have two blank lines and the error actually disappeared. 
So if you have to write the next set of function, you always need to make sure that instead of leaving a single line, you do need to leave two lines over here and then type in the next function. Let's say that's going to be write and then you could pass in whatever you want to pass over here. So you could type in message and you could print out the message as well. So if you actually go ahead and reduce the number of lines to one, as you could see, it's again going to pop out the same thing that is a PP8 expected, two blank lines required, and it actually found one. So make sure to follow this convention with functions and classes as well. So if you're actually writing classes over here, always make sure that those classes are separated by two blank lines. So uh, let's move on to the next rule, which is that the method should be separated by one blank line. Uh, so this was the case for functions. That is, you always need to separate functions with two lines. But in case of methods inside a class, the method should be separated by a single line. So let's create a class first. Let's call it as pointer and let's create a simple method over here. So that's going to be def, let's say display. And in here, let's print out something like, let's say hi. And let's also go ahead and let's define another method over here, which is def write. And let's go ahead and print something out as well. So that's going to be, let's say, hello. So as you could see, uh, this thing actually gives us an error because uh, if you hover over it, it says PP8 expected one blank line. So you should always leave one blank line between two methods. So if you hit enter, as you could see, the error disappeared. And this is the thing which you do need to keep in mind that whenever you actually go ahead and define methods inside a particular class, you should always have a single blank line in between those two methods. So now let's move on to the next rule, which is to only include one space before and after variable assignment. So let's say you want to assign a particular variable. So let me just go ahead and delete this quickly. So let's say you have a particular variable X and you do need to assign it a value of let's say 10. So this is actually a correct way to do so. That is you type an X, leave a single space, type equals, leave a single space and type the number which you want to assign. Now, sometimes what people do is that they directly equate X with 10 over here, or let's say another variable like Y equals 12. And this is actually not the correct way to do so. Or even if you actually leave two spaces over here, still that does not fit into the PP format. So you always need to make sure that you leave only one space before and after the variable assignment. Now let's move on to the next rule or the last rule for this lecture. That is, you should not leave spaces around keyword arguments. So what mistake many people commit is that they actually keep this thing in mind that they have to leave spaces when you basically go ahead and assign a value and they actually go ahead and apply the same rule while calling the function as well or while defining the function as well. So let's say if you have a function like uh, let's say write and here you could type in message equals and what they actually do is that they actually leave the space here as well and they and then they will type in hello. So this is actually not the correct way or not the proper way to write clean code because if you hover over it as you could see it says unexpected spaces around keyword slash parameters. So in order to resolve that you always need to remember like when you write such kind of assignment that whenever you actually go ahead and pass around keyword arguments to functions you always need to make sure that you don't pass any kind of spaces over here. So that's it for this lecture and I hope you guys were able to understand the rules discussed in this lecture. So if you have trouble understanding any rule then feel free to ask me in the Q&A section and I will be there to help you out. So in the next lecture we will be learning a few more rules about how to write clean and effective Python code. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.